Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. Today we're holding our monthly tech meet at my shop and we're going to be working on steering racks. I'm going to show you how to take them apart, put them back together and hopefully make them work. All right, let's see if I can get this seal off now. This, these are really hard. Somebody has probably replaced it with a non Berman style. Here's a kit right there. Let me get this thing off. This is annoying me. Let's try something here. Let's hold it toy. Let's see how it works there. <laughs> this is a, I, I've seen these. You can buy those from a master car. So I've used them. I use a very, the power steering ram on a Silver Cloud has a very similar seal in it, much different size, and the factory seal is real soft, and they tend to leak a lot, so I've up, I upgrade to those, and they were great on that. I don't know about the steering rack, but I do know one thing, when this was in there, it didn't move very easy. Remember how I had to bang it off? Typically when one's been on a car and it's been worked, they just fly right out of there, so that's probably part of the reason. Now here's our other. And if you guys want to look at the difference on these, it's pretty obvious once they're both next to each other. First of all, I think they're different widths. This one's taller. And this has a shoulder on both sides, whereas this only has a shoulder on the one side. That's because the design of the ends of it is different. Uh, one thing also that's different over here is it's got a wiper seal on the inside. See that? This actually will help keep uh, stuff away from the seal as it goes back. It'll pull any dirt that may get down there back uh, Therefore it does it has only one shoulder that has to go over the metal there. This one is double shouldered So it it won't fit on there so That's that's the That and the very top seal is the only difference between the kits if you In here Mention. There's some gizmos. So if you look at the spool valves, you see, okay. Like the what about <laughs> those? <laughs> what about those? All right. Are you going to change those, Ronnie? Uh, I could. Typically, I don't, unless there's a problem with the car when it comes in that's other than leaking. What usually will happen is you'll get a growling noise all the time, even when it's full, or you'll have a lack of assist in one direction or the other. And these, these rings, the reason I don't just automatically change those, first of all, they don't move anywhere. They just, it's a rotating situation. And second of all, it's hard to get them sized correctly because being nylon, when they stretch, they don't snap back like rubber. So you have to size them down. Uh, and I do have a little sleeve that's close, but it's always dicey when you're pressing this uh, housing on. It does have a chamfer, but all you got to do is catch one and it's going to fold over. So I, I don't do it unless I have a problem ahead of time. Um, I'm kind of lazy that way. Or you can pull it back off and you can check and, and, uh, and that's the proper way to do it. Now as far as the sizing goes, when we put the seals, well let's start with the housing. This housing, if you look inside, let me see if I can get my light on there. It's, this has got threads on this end and then the inner part is, is a polished bore. And then on this side, it doesn't have threads on it, on the inside. It has them on the outside for a reason. And it's a polished bore also. So what I do is typically run a rag down through there. So 
so I can clean it out. And then I inspect it. Okay? And you got to watch out when you pull it back out, you don't scratch it. And when you pull this rag out, don't rub your finger against it. I've done that so many times. It's usually when I'm in a rush or when somebody interrupts me. That's when that happens. And just so you all know, the most common reason for errors with a mechanic is interruptions. You forget where you're at, you leave something off, you forget to tighten something. Uh, so I'm going to look in the bore. And you will see minor things typically, but what you're looking for is a big groove. Any kind of big score in there. And that side looks good. And that side looks good. If there is a big scratch in it or whatever, I, I typically will take a ball hone and hone it until I get it smooth again and then clean it out. Get all the, the problem with honing is it that abrasive breaks down as you're honing it. And if you don't get it all out, it just ruins whatever you put in there. So I'm happy with the way this looks inside. Now we can put the seals on this. That's the very next step. So you'll take your plastic P PFTE, PTFE, PTSD. Like I said, we need more acronyms. Okay, we'll put that on, and we'll put the other one on. So, these are typically too big. So if I try to put this in here, it doesn't fit. I could force them. I have done that, and I'll have the same situation where it's going to catch it, it's going to peel some off, and this doesn't seal in all reality. But that piece, if I don't see it and catch it, then, uh, then it's going to hook on one of these seals, and then it'll start leaking. So there's this tool I found the right size. Rolls-Royce did make a tool, especially for this. Uh, but I found a bearing housing that works pretty good. And So I, I size it with this. This isn't, I forget what bearing this is. Did you install the shaft and then put the bearing in from this end? No, you can't slide it in. Okay. And plus, it's too big. You have to size it down. So what I did is I took this, I forget what this, I think this is for a Jaguar uh, six cylinder. It's the front crank spacer for the, that the seal runs on. And I just chamfered both sides on the inside so it wouldn't catch. And then I just work it on there. No? Are you an engineer? Okay. Oh yeah, you're a teacher. Aren't you? That's right. There are always one or two engineers here. But only one today, huh? Only Ray. They have the best questions. Okay, so what I did is I didn't go all the way. I just went down enough to uh, get all the way down to the bottom of that. And then uh, I typically use a much smaller hammer. And then I'm going to flip this. And then I'm going to do it again. Seems tedious. But I have put them together in the past before I found out that you're supposed to use this. this I've been doing this a long time, so I didn't know near what I know now 40 years ago. Um, Huh? Oh, I know. So now you'll see a noticeable difference. It just slides right in pretty much. See that? And you want some, you want it to be tight enough so it doesn't rock, but not so tight that it jams. So I'm happy with that. Why can't they make it the right size in the first place? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, that's just amazing. Well, first of all, maybe they want you to pack it in there. Because it's, because it's split. First of all, it's split. I have seen later kits where that this split, when you put it on there, is bigger. So I think it's better that we size it because it's less likely to shrink, in my opinion. Um, So 
You can try that, except for most radiator clamps have, are not perfectly round. They'll have gaps wherever the screw part goes on there. Uh, you can, like I said, the, a lot of the kits, you can just slice this so that there's more of a gap because essentially it's not sealing, like I said. It's just got to hold it in place. So that's, you know, that's, that's a workaround. Or you could steal one of these off a of Jaguar six cylinder. <laughs> no, no. We're going to strip search everyone when they leave today. <laughs> What's that? Oh. The shop is in a disarray right now. I'm uh, currently in the process of sitting up, setting up an upholstery shop over there on the side. So we had to get rid of all the junk. Rare, precious, uh, previously used parts uh, to my warehouse, so it's been uh, it's been stressful lately. Where's Dad's project car? Huh? Where's Dad's project car? It's on the hoist. Which he's losing here soon. Not the car, but the hoist. My staff is getting large. There we go. So that's going to work. I'm happy with that. So now we can put our U-cup seals. And if you want to just feel the difference, anybody, I know they're dirty, but there's a huge difference in the, in the way that those two feel. It's hard as rock, right? <laughs> and typically on, when you have a seal like this, it gets hard as rock. It's brittle. These aren't brittle. They're tough. They're really tough. Feels good, huh? And these these seals are pretty easy to put on. They just kind of go slip over, and then I usually turn them to make sure that inner lip goes inside the shoulder. All right, now we're ready to insert the rack into the housing. 